words. Before I say anything else at all, let me just say how proud I am to stand at this rostrum to remember the Hillsborough 96 and to pledge with everybody else in this room, never ever by the sun. Conference, it, it is an absolute privilege to be here with you today for your 100th conference to bring greetings and solidarity on behalf of the TUC and to celebrate your achievements as one of Britain's oldest and strongest unions. Now, some of you might know that this year the TUC celebrates uh, its 150th anniversary, but I think we're Johnny come latelys in comparison to the Bakers Union because it was 1847 that the Amalgamated Union of operated bakers was formed. And although you are slightly older than those, I think we have some things in common. First of all, we were both formed uh, in Manchester, the cradle of the Industrial Revolution. We've both changed a lot over the last 150, 170 years, and rightly so, making sure we're relevant to this generation of workers and to the changing world of work. But more importantly, although the fact we've changed and adapted over that century and a half, the belief and the values that brought our, our organisations into being all those decades ago still hold true. A belief that everybody deserves a decent job and fair pay and job security. A belief that everybody in work and beyond deserves dignity and respect. And above all, perhaps, a belief in solidarity that we are stronger when we come together and we achieve so much more when we come together. That's true of individual workers in workplaces and in unions, but it's true also of unions. And the TUC represents five and a half million working men and people, uh, men and women in this country, in every part of the country, in every conceivable industry, sector and profession. And it's by coming together, campaigning together, taking action together that we are strong. Now, before I get into the substance of my remarks, let me just say a few words about your union, a union of which I know you are rightly uh, proud. Under Ronnie's leadership, Ian's leadership, the leadership of your executive council, building on the work done by Joe Marino and others before, you have gone from strength to strength. I was in the hall before, just on that debate, around migrant workers. And your union has done an incredible job organising thousands of migrant workers from every part of the European Union and beyond. You've delivered real and meaningful improvements to terms and conditions at employers like Warburton's, and you won after a hard fight that dispute with Hovis over zero hours contracts and agency workers. You have done a huge amount of that this union should be proud of the work you do day in, day out. But it's not just your workplaces and your sector. Think about the impact you've had on the wider trade union movements. It was your call for a £10 an hour minimum wage that is now the official policy of the TUC. It was your call to ban zero hours contracts that have been picked up across the wider trade union movement. And it's been the action taken by your members in McDonald's that has lit a flame right across the trade union movement. And be, be in no doubt whatsoever that those McStrikers have been an inspiration to us all, taking on one of the world's richest and most powerful multinational companies, fighting for justice and dignity, for decent pay, and end to zero hours contracts and guaranteed hours, and above all, a strong independent union voice in the Bakers Union. Absolutely. Now I know that on May Day we saw those uh, Mac strikers again striking for change, not just in Cambridge, but in Manchester and Watford too. And Man uh, Watford is quite interesting. It happens to be the hometown uh, of McDonald's global CEO, Steve Easterbrook. Now, Steve Easterbrook uh, uh, was paid last year, I was going to say he earned, but I don't think he did earn it. He was paid last year almost $22 million, £16 million. Pounds. Compare that, contrast that to the average McDonald worker working full time. It doesn't take that McDonald worker six months to earn what Steve gets in a single day, or a year, or two years. It takes four years, four years to earn what the boss gets in a day. That is unjustifiable, it's unfair, and it's unsustainable. So my message to your members in McDonald's, my message to everybody involved in that campaign is you can count on the support and solidarity 
of the TUC and the whole trade union movement because your struggle is our struggle. Together we are united and together we will win in McDonald's. Now we need those victories because this is a challenging time for trade unions and a challenging time for our members. Politically, we've got a government that doesn't command a majority in the House of Commons, that's reliant on the votes of the DUP and which is split on the big issue of the day on Brexit. And economically too, we have a very uncertain, volatile picture. On some measures, our economy is booming. Uh, those of you who follow the fortunes of the FTSE 100 closely and looking around the room, I can tell people are checking the stocks and shares all the time, will know that the, the FTSE 100 finished last year on a record high. Employment is at near record levels. But the honest reality is, for lots of the people that we represent, that rosy economic view that you get from the government isn't reflected in their pay packets and it's not reflected in living standards. And as a country, our economic growth rate is the slowest of any of the G7 countries and half the rate of growth in the global economy. Now, I set out that picture not to be a gloom and doom merchant or a, 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 the bringer of bad news, but really just to make two points. The first is, despite all the pressures, despite all the uncertainty, despite all the volatility, unions are still winning day in, day out for working people. And I, talk, I talked about your union, but let me give you one more example. Earlier this year, I was in the headquarters of BALPA, the British Airline Pilots Association, while I sat down and opened negotiations with Ryanair about union recognition. Now, this is a company led by Michael O'Leary, who promised he would never, ever recognize a trade union. A company that for 16 or 17 years blocked trade union recognition, sacked people for uh, demanding trade union recognition. And it's a company that just this year signed that recognition agreement with Balpa. On Friday, signed the recognition agreement with Unite for Cabin Crew. And why? Because despite all the pressures, all the challenges, Balpa, Unite, stood by their members, worked with sister unions right across Europe, stood up for their rights, and they won for their union. <laughs> and my message to unions and employers alike would be this. If we can win at Ryanair, we can win anywhere, and we will win. Now, the second point is this, though. In challenging and uncertain times, you have to have a very clear idea about what your real priorities are. And at the TUC, our priorities are set every year at our Congress. Uh, unions decide them in our campaign plan that we take to the Congress. And we've identified three key things that have to happen if we're going to deliver a new deal for workers. The first is this. We need to fundamentally reshape our economy so that it does work for working people their families and communities. Because the simple fact is this, our economy, the way it works at the moment, is absolutely bust and bankrupt. We've seen billions taken from our public services, cut from our public services, while the big outsourcing companies take out hundreds of millions of pounds in dividends and profits. We've got an economy that is skewed towards London and the Southeast, and which isn't delivering growth in the regions and nations of the UK, and which is driving down productivity. We've got a government that talks the talk, on industrial strategy and then stands by when an employer like JKN is sold off to Melrose or our high streets go into meltdown. And we've got a failure of corporate governance in this country, which means that all the focus is on short-term profits and dividends rather than long-term growth. And the last point on the economy is we've got Brexit. And look, let's be clear, whether you voted for Brexit or not, uh, whether your union did or not, uh, uh, vote to remain. We have now got a Tory party, the point was made before in the debate, that is split on Brexit, that is putting internal party politics before the interests of the country, and which is driving us towards a shambolic, chaotic Brexit, and that is not good enough for our members. So we need a new deal, an end to austerity and real investments in our public services and infrastructure. An end to the selling off of the family silver. Let's bring services back in-house. And once for all, let's end the miserable experience of rail privatisation. Bring the rail companies and the Royal Mail back into public ownership. We want an industrial strategy with unions at its heart. And we want real reform in the way that we do business in this country. That's why the TUC believes the Prime Minister needs to deliver on her promise to put workers on boards. We've been dealing over the last few months at the TUC with the collapse of Carillion. 20,000 people whose jobs directly put at risk. Tens of thousands more 
in the supply, supply chain, I can't help but think if we would add workers on the board of Caribbean, maybe we would have shone a light into what was happening in that boardroom. Maybe we wouldn't have had a company that was increasing dividends year on year, increasing bonuses to top bosses year on year at the point that it was going to collapse. So if it's good enough for workers in Germany to be on the board, good enough for workers in France and in 17 other European countries, it's good enough for workers in this country as well. And just on Brexit, we need to do everything we can to get the politicians to deliver a worker-friendly Brexit. A Brexit that secures jobs, secures trade, investments, employment rights and public services. A Brexit that heals the profound divisions, uh, divisions that have opened up in our society. And a Brexit that defends our Good Friday agreement that the trade union movement worked so hard to secure. Because like, unlike Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, we're not reckless with the history of the Irish border. We know this stuff matters and it's important. Now, the TUC, we believe keeping the single market and the customs union is currently the best option available on the table. Not because we're wedded to the single market and the customs union, on the contrary, but the government's got a better idea we want to hear. Of. But because we are now 300 days away from Brexit, so my message to the government would be this stop playing games with Brexit, start listening to workers, start listening to unions, start listening to companies and get on with delivering a Brexit that works for working people. Now, I just want to talk about the second key priority because regardless of what happens, uh, uh, whatever the outcome of the Brexit deal is, we need employers and governments to step up to the plate right now and put good quality jobs at the heart of the British economy. It's important because our economy has become incredibly good at creating low paid insecure employment. Now your members know all too well how the world of work is being transformed by globalization, by automation, by casualization. We've got companies like Uber and Amazon that are using 21st century technology to deliver 19th century style exploitation. The biggest squeeze on wages since the Napoleonic Wars. One in nine workers on a precarious contract. Nearly a million people on zero hours contracts. Surely one of the world's richest economies can do better than that. That's why we're campaigning alongside you for an end to zero hours contracts, to raise the minimum wage to £10 an hour as soon as possible, to close the loopholes for employment agencies that we talked about before, to fund a decent pay rise for our public services, and above all, to scrap the anti-trade union legislation. Let's spread unions and collective bargaining into every part of our economy. And this conference brings me to the last point that I want to make. We won't be able to reshape the economy. We won't be able to deliver great jobs. We won't be able to secure a decent Brexit that works for working people without strong, effective, independent trade unions. Now, you had Jeremy Corbyn here yesterday. I take comfort from the fact that we've now got a Labour leadership that believes in unions, that believes in collective bargaining, will do in all it can when it comes into government to help our movement grow. But we don't know when the next election might be. It could be six weeks, it could be six months, it could be another four years. So the fact is, we cannot wait for a Labour government. Our job is to do what we can right now to fight for the future for our members and the trade union movement. Last week, the TUC, we held a range of events to mark our 150th anniversary and it was, great. It was a great week. But you know, the way that we really truly commemorate our history is to build for our future by becoming as relevant to my kids' generation as we were to the generation before, to do more, to look, to sound, uh, to feel and represent the next generation of workers. Now, as part of our 150th anniversary, uh, last week the TUC launched a new pilot project online called WorkSmart. You can look it up uh, through Google. The idea is to support that effort to bring in the next generation of young workers into our movement. It's a pilot project, I'll be absolutely honest with you, I don't know if it's going to be a roaring success, I don't know if it's going to face a huge amount of challenges, but I do know this, our history, we, in our movement we have a history and we do our best when we are brave and when we are bold and when we are creative, finding new ways to organise, new ways to bargain and new ways to win. Everything that we've achieved since your union was formed in 1847, since the TUC was formed in 1868, whether it's universal education, or limits on working hours, or working class representation in parliaments, employment rights, paid holidays, decent pensions, the welfare state, the NHS. We achieved that, and we achieved that by working and fighting and campaigning together. And now it's time for us to write a new chapter in our collective story. Together, 
We can, we will rebuild our movement. Together, we can, we will secure justice for workers at McDonald's and elsewhere. And together, we can and we will win that new deal for working people. Let's get to a conference, solidarity. Thank you.